Hello everyone. Now we'll start the discussion on chapter number 10, Anatomy of the Great Financial Crisis of 2007-2009. This chapter is very easy, same as the previous 2019 chapter. Uh, the conceptually or the area of discussion is the same, but now we have very reduced discussion. So if you are coming from the 2019 session, we got uh, we had two chapters in 2019 syllabus. And those chapters were very detailed. In one chapter, there was like discussion relating to the author's opinion, or the scholar's opinion, what they think about the crisis and all. Okay which made those topics were very difficult because you have to understand the author's or the scholar's opinion. His, his understanding someone's opinion is difficult than understanding a concept. But now in 2020, we have like a good thing that now we are discussing the basics of the crisis and the anatomy. Okay. So this is very uh, proper discussion for on the concept level. So we don't have any author's opinion or like that. So you have to understand the concept and you'll be able to solve the answer, uh, solve the question in the exam. Uh, you have one page. This page is more than sufficient for your exam. So you have to study this page only instead of reading the complete book. Even if you read complete book, you will be able to understand this much only. Okay. So for this, before we begin the discussion, I will give you the quick overview of before we begin, I will give you the quick overview of the beginning of the financial crisis, how it all started. And after this, we will just read out some points. You will be able to understand better, right? So we all know like how bank operates, right? So bank provides home loans, say. And uh, financial crisis is all about the home loans and the mortgage, okay? So bank provides the home loan. And against this home loan, say bank provided 10,000 dollar home loan to a party against this bank will keep home as a collateral so we say home is mortgaged with bank so that's why these are mortgages mortgage loans right now in this particular case what will happen we know the basic scenario like after this the party has to pay uh, monthly repayments which will include interest and some interest plus plus principal portion right so let's assume interest rate is 5% okay and bank earns from this particular model from uh, the bank's source of earning is or source of funding is not earning sorry source of funding is from deposits people deposit their money and the same money is provided as a loan so say bank charges 5% on the loan and pays 2% on the deposits okay so so bank pay 2% and receive 5%. Very simple model. Now see here. In this case, what is the earning of the bank? This is 3% minus, that is 5 minus 2, that is charged on the loan, 5% charge on the loan and 2% paid on the deposits. So 5 minus 2. Whatever is the result minus some operational expenses. Okay, so this is very simple model for the bank. So if bank keeps on keeps operating in this particular model, you will find like everything is stable. Okay, if in this model everything should uh, be stable, but in 1977 and in 1990s there were some events happened which created some problems and then financial crisis happened. Okay, one more thing you have to consider is the home loans are long term loans. Okay, but these deposits have variety of deposits, but still we can assume that the deposits are not very short term, like a customer will deposit money today and withdraw tomorrow and not everyone is going to do the same, right? So even if one person does the same, but not everyone will do it. People keep deposits for certain period, a longer period. Some also believe in certificate of deposits or in India you have fixed deposit like this. So all those are the long term <clears throat> long term, uh, all those have the long term duration, right? Okay. Now, in this particular model, there are certain things. Things like bank will only provide loans, those who can repay.
bank will verify everything and then only uh, bank will be able to uh, bank will provide you the loan then next thing is the people because loan is expensive at 5% only people who actually need it will go for the loan people will not take a reckless decision by taking loan so only those who need it will borrow right and what else like we can discuss we will also add some other points for now just stick to this now imagine a scenario that these interest rates start to drop and after certain interval or after certain periods say interest rates are near to zero say one percent so what will happen? What is the problem with this particular scenario? Because the interest rate is 1%, of course, you will also, like interest rate will also reduce on the deposits. So the deposit will drop to say 0.2%. So in this particular model, the problem is people will start to borrow more because interest rates are cheap, right? Low, if the loan becomes cheaper, people will start to borrow. And if the deposit becomes not very lucrative, like say 0.2% on the deposits, people will stop depositing money. Okay, so this is the typical problem with the uh, lowering interest rate. So what happened? The first problem is here. In the ideal scenario, only those who need it will borrow. But now because interest rates are lowering, which happened in starting 1977, it started to happen. Interest rates were lowering. And in uh, around two, 1990s, there were like uh, all the policies were designed by the US government, which were facilitating the home loans. Okay cheaper home loans. So lowering interest rate is the one reason which is the 2008 which is the cause of 2008 crisis. I will explain you how how it converted into that but now we even if you just assume this particular scenario you can understand people will start to borrow more but a bank has the limit. What is the limit here? Limit is that people will avoid depositing money or individuals will stop depositing money in the bank because bank is providing very less interest rate. Now next scenario so the first problem i'll just note it down like first problem is cheap rate what is the second problem securitization so what is securitization we have the same picture bank bank provides home loan of dollar 10,000 at say 1% or let's take the higher interest rate because I need to explain you some other things in this. So bank initially funded this loan by taking deposits. So deposit at say 0.5% right. And 10,000 deposits. So this is a very simple model. 10,000 deposit and 10,000 as a loan. But what if bank is not getting enough deposits to fund more loans? So here, securitization comes into the picture. So securitization is the organization, is the structure, sorry, which converts these loans into the securities. How? So, what a bank will do is, bank will sell these assets. So, for this particular loan, loan provided by the bank is receivable for the bank, right? So, this is the asset for the bank. Always remember, loans are asset for the bank because bank will generate revenue from those loans. So, it is asset for the bank and liability for the borrower. Very simple. So, bank will sell these assets. Okay. That is right to earn from these assets to these SPVs, special purpose vehicles sold and sorry, yeah, 10,000. Okay. And interest. 
here also like bank used to receive interest plus principal so here also interest plus principal will be transferred to the spv by reducing some portion of it okay so let's say bank will hold 0.7 percent and bank will transfer 1.1.3 1 percent interest plus principal will be transferred to spv okay and bank will hold 0.7 percent so what is the income for the bank here this 0 0.5 minus 0 0.7 0 0.2 percent right <clears throat> now again moving forward what this spv will do spv will sell these receivables receivables as in interest plus principal at 1.3 percent and the principal to the uh, investors okay so security holder so this is say tranche one senior tranche then tranche two tranche one tranche two and tranche three okay so you have three tranches so this is very basic scenario what happens in the tranche is this senior tranche will get lesser interest rate of say 0.7%. So this is still lucrative than the normal deposit. So investors will be willing to deposit in this. How much uh, interest this particular SPV is getting on this? It is 1.3%. So senior tranche will get 0.7%. Ms. 9 will get say point. 2% and uh, <clears throat> the junior tranche will get or equity tranche will get say 2% okay so how is it how is this possible uh, it is possible with the basic mathematics so 80% of the sorry 60% of the loans will be provided at 0.7% so uh, sorry 60 percent of the repayments will be provided at the 0.7 percent the return will be 0.7 percent on this so on this 10,000 60 percent is dollar 6,000 okay and <clears throat> this will be funded by the tranche then 30 percent comes from the mezzanine okay 30% investors hold the mezzanine tranche and the remaining 10% will hold 2% uh, that is equity tranche okay so if you just perf simply do the mathematics you will see like yes it is possible like 2% can be distributed so because you have like only 0.7% to pay on majority of your portion majority of this loan you will be able to the SP will be able to make it good okay you can also do this like just take for your rough example just take 10 percent uh, 10,000 as a, a value then SPV, SPV is receiving 1.3 percent interest which means 130 dollars on the right yeah then <clears throat> this is divided into dollar 6000 at 0.7 percent then dollar 3000 at 1.2 percent and dollar 1000 at 2 percent okay so just see here you have three tranches and in these tranches if you just do this simple calculation i don't have the calculator here do the simple calculation you will always find like this is manageable okay so this works i'm explaining you this because every time one of the student will ask like if you are receiving 0.3 percent then how can you pay at two percent so it is like it is adjustment because here you are paying lower so you are saving from the senior tranche and the savings are paid to the equity tranche then why not everyone should invest in the equity tranche? 
reason is very simple because equity tranches are very risky so if these home buyers start to default then this default will be borne by equity tranche first and that's why these equity tranche holders ask for higher rates higher earning rates so higher risk higher returns so higher um, <clears throat> higher earning rates very simple then you have mezzanine tranche so once the equity is evaporated it will go pressure will go to mezzanine tranche and the senior tranche will come third for this remember you have to see 10 percent plus 30 percent that is 10 plus 30 40 percent of the uh, fund should default then only the senior tranche will come into picture so that's why senior tranche was considered as a safe risk and hence provided triple a rating okay so again this is the um, <coughs> let me rephrase the statement yeah so this is the basic structure of the uh, secretization so here secretization ends now we will discuss the problem what happened because of the secretization which caused the financial crisis now see here because risk is transferred to this is your bank to the spv right and bank now have surplus 10,000 in funds in the uh, their source of funds uh, bank felt like they should provide more loans if the bank start to provide more loans they will again the same cycle will be repeated bank will again provide loan on this 10,000 and then bank will resell this to spv again bank will provide loan and again sell it to spv so sell it to spv as in collect 10,000 from the bank uh, sorry uh, collect 10,000 from the spv and bank will again provide the loan so this became a common norm so what is the motivation here how bank can earn if bank provides more loans then bank will be able to earn the commission so this is the commission amount 0.7 percent right because 1.3 is transferred to the sp so this is this this is the limited commission amount and if bank keeps on repeating this and keeps rolling this then banks will be able to generate substantial amount right so it can if you repeat this same thing for say um 10 times so your total loan provided will be 1 lakh dollars right so <clears throat> banks got the motivation to provide loans and without any risk why because risk is transferred to the spv so because the risk was transferred to the SPV and uh, motivation, bank had the motivation to provide loans again and again, bank started lending recklessly. Like whoever comes, bank will not uh, do like their due diligence, proper KYC, bank will not check for their credit history and everything and bank will issue the loans. Okay. So, so this caused the problem. What type of problem? So there was supply of funds, excessive funds in the market and people started to buy homes because they were getting uh, loans at very cheap rates and banks were giving them loans. Okay. So if you want to see the clear picture of this, like what happened, like very step by step scenario, watch movie Big Shot. And so this movie is about the financial crisis and how uh, some some investors or some hedge fund managers were able to <laughs> excuse me sorry so <clears throat> how some ma fund managers were able to predict the crisis and uh, how they exploited this particular opportunity so this is a very interesting movie Okay, so what happened because of this scenario? So, 
So housing prices kept increasing till 2007-8 and started to fall in this particular period. Okay. Now, how this particular thing caused a financial crisis? So, see, imagine a scenario in this particular point. You borrowed, you bought a house worth $10,000. Okay. So, at that point, it was $10,000. So, you bought house at $10,000. For this, you took loan. Right. Now, the value of house is... 10,000 that's why you borrowed 10,000 and this this was a scenario okay so 100% financing was there in before 2008 that was a ridiculous scenario for this particular part now you borrowed you bought the loan of what $10,000 and now imagine a scenario you have loan of 10,000 but the price of house dropped to 8,000 meaning you will be end up paying $10,000 for asset worth $8,000, which is not a proper deal. So if you just default, default on this particular asset, what will happen? Your house will be, um, more, uh, it will be sold by the loan uh, bank and bank will collect the loan money, right? But bank will not be able to collect the full loan money because the prices are dropped now. This is the clear picture. And you will be able to buy a new house at relatively low price. So at say $8,000, so you are getting house at a cheaper rate. If you can just wait, same house will be available at say $5,000, right? So you have enough motivation to default on the house because if you just default on that house, instead of paying $10,000 for the same house, you can pay $5,000, right? So people started to default and as the people started to default, the borrowers started to default. It created a situation with the SPV, special purpose vehicle. So now SPV will not be able to earn interest. It will create pressure on the equity tranche. So equity tranche will see losses. Once the equity tranche lost, then it will get transferred to the mezzanine tranche and then it will get transferred to the senior tranche. Okay. So this is the this is general picture what happened here. So before 2008, house, housing prices started to decline because of the decline, default increased, and because of this default, risk was transferred to whom? SPVs, right? So SPV faced this risk. SPV has to face the default. In this part, normal bank depository banks were very safe, okay, because they transferred their assets to SPVs. And because SPV is default, uh, because of this SPV default, it, it uh, further increased into systemic risk. So I hope you got the idea, general discussion on the general idea. Okay, I tried to simplify as much as possible. Now let's see the actual discussion. Now you will have like most of the part which will be uh, a repetition of whatever we discussed in the last part. Now see here, the cheap interest rate clubbed with the financial innovations, secretization, reduced the credit risk borne by the originator. Originator is bank. Okay. This led to originating bank becomes less concerned with the credit quality of their borrowers. Right. So they stop checking like even if like borrower can repay or not. And this resulted into relaxed lending standards anyone can get loan like that so what started as a subprime crisis escalated to the other assets and geographical areas so this is general discussion subprime crisis as in because these loans are known as the subprime loans so loan to the non-worthy is the subprime loan so this subprime crisis resulted or escalated to other asset classes so it should be limited it should have been limited to the uh, that particular asset class right but banks were so entangled in different types of asset it created pressure to other assets as well so government around the world intervened by lowering the interest rate and providing the liquidity support so this is the conclusion of the your crisis okay now the general discussion 
So bank increasingly finance their long term assets through the short term liabilities gave rise to maturity mismatch. There was a maturity mismatch as well. So these loans are long term loans and the fundings which are coming for the SPV are the short term fundings like a repo and rollovers like that. Okay. So which created or which furthered the problem. Now, when the crisis struck, the house prices stalled and like it started to drop and the short term liabilities could not be rolled over. At the peak of the crisis in September 2008, Lehman declared bankruptcy. So Lehman Brothers was a firm uh, investment bank and they were heavily uh, invested in subprime loans. Okay. And when the crisis started, so first bank was the Lehman Brothers who declared bankruptcy. This is the point you are supposed to remember, which triggered some massive losses of confidence and froze the interbank lending market. Interbank lending market as in all the banks lend each other loans or the funds. This is the interbank lending market, right? So if there is no or if there is a uh, dryness in the interbank liquidity market, there will be problem with the funding of the assets. Okay, because banks will not be able to fund their assets because they are not able to roll over their roll over their uh, borrowings or the funds and which will result in not able to hold the assets. So other banks were either bought by the competitors or converted to the bank holding companies and become a regulated by the Fed. Okay, so Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were the nationalized and the large financial services and the insurance companies. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were nationalized. The large financial services and the insurance companies like AIG was bailed out to prevent the further systemic issues. Okay. AIG is also the case. Again, AIG is not AIG part is not discussed in your book, so we can avoid it. But again, what happened with the AIG? AIG was this uh, was insurer. Okay, they insured these tranches. Okay, so AIG was was insurer of tranches by CDS, credit default swap. Okay, so they were selling the credit default swap. So if suddenly everyone starts to default, AIG had to pay on this credit default swap, right? And they were unable to pay it because everyone, so remember this insurance business runs on the basic assumption that losses will not or the defaults or any type of events will not increase beyond a certain limit okay if it increases beyond certain limit then obviously insurance company will not be able to pay so aig was in the cds business at the time and to pro protect the insurance business at large aig had to bail out again you can read the aig bailout case it is very interesting then subprime mortgage and the collateralized debt obligation CDOs. Okay. So subprime mortgage is secured loan issued to borrower with a poor credit holder. Poor credit history. Okay. So subprime mortgages is subprime mortgage is a secured loan issued to borrower with a poor credit history. A typical subprime loan could be structured as 30 years to 30 years to 28 adjustable rate mortgage ARM. That is for first two years there will be say fixed rate and then after uh, first two years there will be floating rate. This means like 2 and 28 means this. So adjustable rate mortgage as in first two years are relatively low fixed teaser rates 
which then reverts to much higher variable rates as a floating rate for remaining 28 years of the mortgage. This was compounded by this particular subprime mortgage loan was compounded by 100% loan to value as we discussed banks were providing complete loan like 10 if you want to buy house of ten thousand dollars bank will provide complete ten thousand dollars in india if you see bank will never provide you hundred percent loan bank will always provide you 85 percent max to max 90 percent loan why because bank want to keep this 10 percent as a um, protection money protection money as in they want to keep it as a buffer in case the house is the house prices uh, declines and their borrowers defaults on the loan okay then interest only so you have to pay interest only for the certain period and then you have to start paying the uh, you have to pay the principal amount then ninja loans no income no job and assets okay so ninja loans are the loans provided to people who have no income no jobs and assets as well so it is like a providing loan loan to a beggar like that and a liar loans. Liar loans are loans where little or fake evidence was provided. Provided to take the loan. So some subprime borrowers hope to refinance. Okay, so general question. Why banks were interested or invested in this particular part? Because bank were getting commission, right? The rollover business. They have to just provide the loan and sell those loans to the SPV. And SPV will bear all the risk. And every time bank completes this cycle, bank will be able to earn commission of 0.7%. On deposit, bank was supposed to pay 0.5%. Uh, so 0.2% commission. And if bank keeps increasing this particular cycle, bank will be able to add on to that 0.2% uh, commission business. So that's why banks were doing all this. Okay. Some subprime borrowers hope to refinance houses after their teaser periods or <clears throat> okay so hope to refinance the houses after their teaser period that is once the teaser period is over they will go for the refinancing right so start with like 2 plus 28 so you borrowed loan bought the house after two years, when your lower interest rate, cheap interest rate period is over, refinance the asset. Why some other person will be able to interested in refinancing it? Because that was the market then. Okay, every bank wanted to finance on the mortgage, right? So, um, next bank will provide you at 2%, uh, sorry, uh, 2 plus 28 terms or the 2 plus 26 terms. So, again, you will refinance it once the TSI period is over. So, 2 plus 2, you can keep doing it. So this was the first thing. What happened? Like some subprime borrowers did this and others sell at profit due to soaring prices in the housing. When the house prices declined, borrowers started defaulting. Reason I already explained. Okay. Role of CDOs. So CDO is a securitization structure where the pool of asset are sliced into multiple tranches. Senior tranches were considered very safe with a AAA rating. Again, the same discussion. Junior tranches of the multiple CDOs structure were then often bundled together and repackaged as a CDO squared. So you will take mezzanine tranches of different different uh, pools. You will club it. And then you will again create a CDO square. Okay. So all those tranches, the investment security. You remember? These are the investors, T1, T2, T3. So they are buying securities. This security is CDOs. Okay. Now, these structures were opaque. The fact that senior tranche were given AAA rating by agencies were unrealistic and based on the historical data for the prime mortgage and did not take into other factors. There was further this was further exacerbated by conflict of interest whereby 
Rating agencies were paid by the issuer and therefore incentivized to provide a favorable rating. Now, what happened with this particular rating agency is scam. This was we cannot say this as a scam because there was no such regulations on the credit rating agency that they should not provide rating and collect money from or receive money from the issuer. So the issuer SPV was the issuer of the securities, right? The CDOs he was paying uh, issuing CDOs to the T1, T2, and T3, right? Now what? What was the case in that particular part? Uh, they has to get the credit rating. So T1 will get the senior tranche will get triple A rating, right? So to get the triple A rating, they hire they used to hire agencies, credit rating agencies, and these credit rating agencies had the incentive to provide better credit rating because if they don't provide better credit rating, that issuer will go to some other credit rating agencies. So whoever say I have three options like one, two, three, three credit rating agencies, whoever gives me good credit rating for my securities as an issuer, right? Whoever gives me the better credit rating, I will give the job to that particular rating agency, right? So this is the conflict of interest. That is the credit ratings, uh, credit rating agencies were providing rating, uh, were providing ratings to those issuers who were paying them, right? So there was a conflict of interest and a motivation to provide a favorable rating. Okay, then short term funding and a systemic risk. So SPV, SIV, one and the same thing. Used short term funding for long term assets, long term assets in housing loans. Two instruments for funding were asset backed commercial papers, ABCP, and the repurchase agreement, repos. So these two types of assets were used to finance uh, finance all these um, finance the uh, your assets okay so this particular part see here spv this spv is paying 10000 dollars to bank this 10000 is coming from the repos or short term funds Right. So, of course, to sell security, first you must have security. And to have securities, you must first pay $10,000 to this particular bank so that you can buy the loans. Right. So, to buy these loans, bank SPVs or SIVs used repos and short term funds. Okay. So, this is the case. So, they use asset backed commercial papers, ABCP, and the repurchase agreements, repos. So commercial papers is a short term unsecured form of financing primarily used by the high quality issuers. ABCP is similar but backed by the collateral. Remember this what is ABCP backed by the collateral such as credit card loans mortgages. So these mortgages were provided to the whom uh, these ABCP providers. Due to the inherent assumption that the issuer will be able to roll over the obligation at maturity, repos were another source. <coughs> Due to the inherent limitation that the issuer will be able to roll over the obligation at maturity, there is a statement missing here. It created a problem. Okay, so there was an inherent limitation. I guess it is this uh, covered in the latest part. So repos is the another source of this uh, financing, short-term financing. In repos, haircut was applicable. Okay, haircut as in for this you have to understand repo first. For now, just assume that if I provide you collateral of ten thousand dollars. Uh, say I have house, I provide you that house as a collateral of $10,000 and in return, you will give me $10,000 as a money. Okay. So this is a basic transaction. If in case of repo, repo is complete different type of security, but concept of repo and haircut is the same. If the haircut is applicable, so I have to provide you say assuming 10% haircut. I have to provide you dollar one thousand sorry eleven thousand 
worth of house to get the 10,000 worth of loan. Okay, so this is the haircut. So haircuts were applicable. Again, this particular part is not testable. Testable part is already covered in the discussion. Because ABCP and the repos were funded by the short term and dependent and dependent on the rollover capability. This exposed the SIVs to the huge liquidity risk in the event of crisis. That is, bank will not be able to roll over the uh, roll over the funds. SP will not able, be able to roll over the funds. As the housing prices started to decline, lenders started to questioning the quality of the asset residing in SIV structures. Many hedge funds were unable to roll over their debt, forcing them to start selling their CDO investments and other higher quality assets to meet the margin calls. LIBOS, LIBOR OIS spread is the indicator of overall health of the financial system, which rose from 0% to 3.6% at the peak of the crisis. Now, what is the LIBOR OIS spread? You have this discussion in FRM part 2, complete chapter on this. Okay, so for now, just remember LIBOR OIS spread increased in crisis period, and this indicates the increase in the credit risk and hence more reluctant to lend in the interbank market. The events of the crisis illustrate the idea of the systemic risk. Now, what is the central bank and what, uh, what is covered in the central bank in intervention? That is, once the crisis started, central bank as a Fed intervened in the particular crisis and there were they took some steps. So, these are the steps. Okay. So, Fed and the other central banks around the world intervened in the intervened by providing the liquidity support and lowering the interest rates. Following actions were taken by the Fed. Long-term loans secured by high-quality assets or the collaterals. Discount window. So, this is what happened. Like uh, Fed provided loans, Fed provided discount window. Discount window as in you can borrow a cheap loan for short-term period. This is provided by the government or the Fed or the central banks. Liquidity agent, liquidity against the high-quality liquid asset, illiquid asset. So, liquidity against as in, you provide me illiquid asset, I will provide you liquid asset so that you can sell it. Okay, I got the security and you got the liquidity. So, why this uh, works? Because, say I am central government, uh, central bank. Okay, and central bank is provide, uh, central bank is supposed to provide the liquidity in the market for that reason. Funding to purchase, funding to purchase asset back commercial papers. Then acquiring assets issued by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were the fund providers, the guarantee pro, uh, guaranteed by the um, Fed government. Okay. So again, you don't have like any discussion. This is a very cut short discussion. So for now, like even if you remember all these key points, you are good to go. Just remember the key points and. Mm. There are a lot of concepts here, uh, which maybe right now you are not able to understand. But in FRM part 2, you have like complete discussion. Okay, You have full section, 3-4 chapters on CDOs. Uh, then you have 2-3 uh, chapters, you have whole subject on the liquidity. And that subject again discusses or it talks about the credit crisis. So everything will be like you are not losing on the knowledge. Assuming FRM part 1 and part 2 combine. Right now, just focus on the exam. Ignore the knowledge part because you, I will be able to explain everything in detail properly in FRM part 2. Okay. So that's all about your chapter number 10. See you in the next chapter.